anatomy of the meniscus. The meniscus is a cushion structure made of cartilage which fits within the knee joint between the femur and the tibia. There are two menisci inside the knee joint, a medial meniscus and a lateral meniscus. The medial meniscus is C-shaped and the lateral meniscus is more circular. The medial meniscus covers about 50% of the medial tibial plateau and the lateral meniscus covers about 70% of the lateral tibial plateau. When you look at the medial meniscus, the anterior and the posterior horns are separated from each other and from the anterior cruciate ligament. The posterior horn of the median meniscus is the most important secondary restraint to anterior translation of the tibia. The anterior and posterior horns of the lateral meniscus are closer to each other and near the insertion of the anterior cruciate ligament. Now, if you look at the diagram, you see the transverse intermeniscal ligament connects the anterior horns of the lateral and the median menisci together. The meniscus is made up of type 1 collagen. The meniscus provides shock absorption and stability to the knee joint. The meniscus provides load sharing across the knee by increasing the contact area and decreasing the contact stress. If the meniscus is removed, the patient will develop arthritis of the knee. Removing meniscal tissue changes the contact stresses and lead to structural and biomechanical changes in the articular cartilage which may predispose the patient to degenerative arthritis. The contact stress increases two to three times when the meniscus is removed. The stress increases with the increased loss of meniscal tissue. The meniscus helps to protect the knee joint, allowing the bones to slide freely on each other. However, the meniscus limits flexion and extension extremes. The meniscus transmits 50 degrees of force in extension and 90 degrees of force in flexion. Beyond 90 degrees, most of the force is transmitted to the posterior horn of the meniscus. So flexion of the knee causes pain. How about the blood supply? The blood supply of the meniscus decides the healing potential of the meniscus. The peripheral third of the meniscus is vascular and the meniscal tear will heal in this area if repaired. The inner third of the meniscus is not vascular and is nourished by synovial fluid. The middle third is red-white zone and it is avascular. The blood supply of the meniscus originates from the medial and lateral genicular arteries. The meniscus appears triangular in a cross section. Here are the three zones of the meniscus. The most important zone is the red-red zone, which a tear of the meniscus will heal in that location. Location of the tear is the best predictor of a successful meniscal repair. The posterior horn of the median meniscus has the highest incidence of degenerative tears. The peripheral portion of the meniscus has nerve supply. It is well innervated in the posterior horn. There is mechanoreceptors. It provides proper reception during joint movement. Traumatic tear of the meniscus may cause bleeding inside the knee joint, but not a lot of bleeding compared to an ACL tear, which will cause a lot of bleeding. 
The swelling is usually gradual in meniscal tear, which is different from the ACL tear, where the swelling will be sudden, immediate, and more swelling. Joint line tenderness is the most specific examination that indicates the patient has a meniscal tear. Tear of the meniscus occurs from twisting or jumping activities, such as with sports like football or skiing. The tear usually is an acute traumatic injury and usually requires surgery. In older individuals, tears are degenerative tears with gradual onset of pain. Older patients may benefit from surgery if there is mechanical symptoms, such as locking, catching, instability, intermittent swelling of the knee associated with pain. Tears of the medial meniscus occurs three times more than tears of the lateral meniscus. The lateral meniscus is mobile and the medial meniscus is more fixed, causing more tears to occur in the medial meniscus compared to the lateral meniscus. The popliteus hiatus makes the lateral meniscus more mobile with less injuries. The lateral meniscus is associated with a discoid meniscus and meniscal cyst. The lateral meniscus is also associated with an acute injury to the anterior cruciate ligament. When you see a double PCL sign on the sagittal images of the MRI, it is diagnostic for bucket handle tear of the median meniscus. In patients with chronic ECL tears and in patients with degenerative arthritis, you will find more medial meniscal tears. You find also the medial meniscal tear may be associated with a Baker cyst. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.